Um, I'm a resident and business owner here in East Boston, but I'm probably more famous here in East Boston for being a co-leader in the East Boston Open Discussion Group on Facebook. Uh, maybe I have some members here. I can point out a few here just tonight. Uh, there's a number of you that are here. Um, so at East Boston Open Discussion, we do a lot of uh, talk about all the issues related to East Boston, political issues, what's your favorite restaurant, all kinds of different things. And if you want to join that discussion, you can go to eastboston.buzz. Um, we are one of the sponsors here tonight. Uh, one of the other sponsors, actually, Uh, buenas tardes, mi nombre es Erika Sánchez y soy la coordinadora en IBEC y pues acá también somos uno de los patrocinadores de este evento ahí atrás está también uh, mi director, gracias por estar aquí acompañándonos esta noche uh, y quiero decirles que vamos a estar en esta tarde traduciendo haremos lo que podamos, ok, porque mi primer idioma es español muchas gracias So, uh, we have East Boston Open Discussion that's uh, sponsoring the event tonight. We also have El Gerardo Latino, uh, Luis Bravo, he's here tonight as well. <laughs> El Gerardo Latino is a new newspaper that's going to be due to be launched here shortly. It will be serving the uh, Spanish and Latino community here in East Boston, uh, Chelsea, Everett, and uh, Winthrop. Um, we also have Frank Ramirez here from EVEC, East Boston Ecumenical. A community council, stand up. There he is. They're all the sponsoring the event here tonight. Esta tenemos esta noche aquí Luis Bravo de de El Jardín Latino. Es el, es el dueño de ese general latino, que es el nuevo periódico para los latinos, para la comunidad latina aquí en East Boston, Chelsea, uh, Revere y Winthrop. Están lanzando su periódico este mes o dentro de unas semanas. Es un placer tenerlo como aquí, como otra persona que está apoyándonos esta noche en, en este foro. Thank you for uh, all the residents coming out tonight. First off, can everyone hear me okay? All right, good. So uh, thank you for all, uh, all everyone coming out here tonight, the candidates, and especially you guys, the, the voters, the residents, the business owners here in East Boston. It really means a lot because I realize, first off, we've got a little bit of a late start here tonight, but also that we've had some really non-fun weather recently, and I know that's really tough to find parking and driving, just getting around here in East Boston is very difficult, but your presence here tonight is, is great in the name of democracy for East Boston. It's great that we have our candidates here. We've got six farm candidates here tonight with us. Joan Pomodoro, Ed DeVoe, Camilo Hernandez, Joe Ruggiero, Adrian Madar, and Luz Capicchio. I think I've got everyone's pronunciations correct. Uh, do you have any, so, do you have any paper there? What is and, the um, So, I really have to admit, I was trying to find something optimistic to talk about here tonight, but I was looking at the weather, we're going to get more snow tonight. We're going to be 45 degrees on Sunday, so maybe there's a little bit of optimism there, but maybe some snow will mix in there anyway. But the Red Sox are at least due to win the pennant, so a little bit of optimism here. Uh, so, as of this very moment, one other thing to be optimistic about is that the parking ban has been lifted at 6 p.m. tonight, which is good news for a lot of residents on those main arteries. Um, and also that uh, we have to give a you know, good thanks to the uh, Department of Public Works, Jim Grossman and his crew for doing a great job, to, uh, a lot of hard work as far as cleaning up our streets here in East Boston. Uh, all that said, uh, tonight is really about getting to know the candidates better. So we're here to develop this, uh, this, this forum for a kind of Q&A session for a lot of questions that have been uh, received from residents here in East Boston, as well as some of those developed from the, uh, from the group moderators. So without any further uh, ado, we will go ahead and write into the introductions for, for each of the candidates. So I'm going to go ahead and Yep, yeah, we're going to go ahead and do a, an English translation, and well, the English directly from the candidates themselves. Camilo will all be doing his in English and in Spanish, but we also have, thankfully, a translator here tonight as well. 
So, let's see. We got Ed DeVoe, you are up first. For your introduction, you've got two minutes. Microphone. Yeah, I don't want to stand up. It's up to you. Yeah, come stand up. Yeah. Front? Sure. Tell me if I'm wrong. Yes, absolutely. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you to all of you uh, for coming out on such a cold, snowy evening. Thank you to Paul and, and Luis and for everyone else for putting this together. My name is Ed DeVoe, and I'm running for state representative because I believe that East Boston deserves a state representative that has the passion, vision, and experience to help lead this, name, this neighborhood forward. I have the most experience of any candidate in this race. I spent 13 years working in the state legislature. I was chief of staff to Anthony Petroselli in both the House and the Senate. I've run a number of committees in which he was chair. You got to go after him. Okay, in which he was chair. Uh, the Committee on Financial Services, the Committee on Community Development and Small Business, the Committee on Environment, just to name a few. I've written legislation, I have been through the budget process. Again, I believe that I have the most experience of any candidate in this race. And let me tell you why that's important. Whoever wins this race, in terms of seniority, is going to be 160th out of 160 members of the House of Representatives. My office will probably be in the basement, it'll be a cubicle, and I'll be lucky if they give me a desk. But you deserve a state representative that can work their way up from the basement. I believe that I am that candidate. I just will translate for you. Okay. Um, he said that he's happy that to. Él está feliz por representarlos a ustedes. Lo siento. I couldn't have that. Lo siento porque muchas veces me confunden. A veces me pongo a hablar con alguien acá y hablo español y estoy hablando con los que hablan inglés. Lo siento. Um, él está diciendo que está feliz de representarlos a ustedes, de correr su candidatura. Y a él le da lo mismo si él tiene que estar en una mesa en el basement de la casa estatal por representarlos a ustedes, pero él es un fiel devoto de querer apoyar a la comunidad. Así que él pide a ustedes que voten por él porque cree firmemente que es un candidato perfecto para ganar y podernos representar. I have always delivered for this community. I've spent the better part of my life volunteering in various organizations that have made this community better. I was the past vice president of the board of directors at the Salesian Boys and Girls Club, a member of the East Boston Athletic Board that gives college scholarships to kids here from East Boston. I've coached Little League Baseball. I was the chair of the Constitution Beach Association that helped secure funding for a new bathhouse, playground, and concession stand at the beach. We worked with Save the Harbor, Save the Bay to do water quality testing at the beach. I have, I'm a co-founder of Eastie's Elves, an organization that has given thousands of toys to kids and families uh, in this neighborhood during Christmas and the holiday season. I want to work as your representative, and I humbly ask for your vote on March 3rd. Thank you very much. Él dice que él ha dado un servicio enorme a la comunidad y él ha sido uno de los um, vicepresidentes de el Boys and Girls Club, que creo que la mayoría de nosotros conocemos acá, pero él ha tenido muchas áreas a desarrollar como crecimiento de nuestra comunidad. Así que él pide que para el 3 de marzo, pues, nosotros podamos votar por él. Gracias. Tenemos ahora al señor Camilo Hernández. Camilo Hernández. I think the, the community doesn't need a mi microphone. <laughs> That's a reality. Good evening, everybody. My name is Camilo Hernandez. It is an honor to be here tonight as a candidate for State Rep. Camilo Hernandez started 12 years ago. <laughs> no. It's going to be too loud. <laughs> loud is good. Loud is good. What you want there? The loud is good. Answer, well, well, once again, you know, Camilo has been working for the last 12 years <coughs> in East Boston. He started the Mana, from Mana Middle School as a professor, providing tennis, literacy, and leadership class for those students in need for four years. In four years, working with the students, 
alone doing home visits. Four nights a week, long hours, 12, 14 hours a day. To let the parents know what kind of curriculum and work we will do at the Manor. After four years working with the Manor, parents and faculty, the great, one of the greatest mayor all time, Mayor Menino, this administration asked me to be part of the census 2010. We start to develop this promotion for the census, connect with people and families, because we needed to work the reality of the community of East Boston. After that, the elected officials approached me. They want to connect with those families. And they offered me a job. For the last five years, I've been working at the city councilor, East Boston liaison, listening to you, talking to you, taking pictures with you, going to the festivals, and listening to your questions. When are you going to run? When are you going to run? When are you going to run? So I'm here. I'm your candidate. As a state rep, I'm committed to bring the office. I need to do it in Spanish. Mi nombre es Camilo Hernández. Muy buenas noches. Gracias por tenerme aquí. Es un placer y un honor ser su candidato. Empecé hace 12 años como profesor aquí en La Humana, siendo profesor de tenis, literatura y el liderazgo, con la condición de que tenía que hacer visitas a la casa. Eran días largos, 12, 14 horas, para explicar a los padres lo que estamos haciendo, implementando con los muchachos, el currículum de los muchachos de la juventud. Después de esos cuatro años, la administración del alcalde, Tom Menino, me propuso hacer parte del programa de Census 2010 para conocer la realidad de la asistencia a los residentes de Disposto. Después de esos programas, trabajar en diferentes community centers, centros comunitarios, grupos cívicos, me propuso los oficiales electos, específicamente el concejal de East Boston, Sala Matina, que fuera su conexión de East Boston para la oficina de él. Lo llevo haciendo cinco años, escuchándolos a ustedes, trabajando con ustedes, tomándome fotos con ustedes. Y ahora es un honor ser candidato estar conectado con ustedes para ser el próximo representante estatal que para nosotros es diputado la persona que va a estar aquí pendiente, trabajando con ustedes, elaborando porque las horas de oficina el trabajo se hace aquí en Isbos, se hace con ustedes en los cafés, centros comunitarios, en las calles el bus, en el tren y allá se llevan las ideas de ustedes se registran, porque ustedes tienen que mandar en su propia casa. Siempre es un honor estar aquí una vez más. Le doy las gracias a la gente que ha elaborado este foro, este debate. Es un placer. Quiero también reconocer el trabajo del resto de los candidatos. Adrian Madro. Thank you to the organizers and to the audience. Thank you for being here this evening. Again, my name is Adrian Madro, and it is an absolute privilege to be running uh, to be the next state representative of East Boston. I am born and raised in this community, just up the street on Eagle Hill. My mom grew up on Webster Street down in Jeffreys Point. My dad is an immigrant from Italy. I went to Boston Land School for high school and then Tufts University for college. And as a senior at Tufts, I began working for Representative Carlo Basil at the State House. And for the past four years, I served as Rep Basil's chief of staff where I was able to learn the inner workings of state government, the budget process, how to file legislation and effectively move it through the, pro through the legislative process, and how to be a strong advocate for our community here in East Boston. While working for Rep Basil, I went back to Tufts and got a master's degree in public policy and urban planning. And uh, it was a very practical thing because what I learned at night, I was applying day in and day out at the office. I grew up in a family of activists. My mom, Deborah Cave, has run the Eagle Civic Association for nearly 30 years. So I grew up with a strong sense of community activism and civic engagement. And I've tried to live by those ideals. The past several years, I've gotten heavily involved in the community, serving on a number of nonprofit boards, including the YMCA, 
the Harborside Community Council, which is the largest provider of adult ed and ESL in the community, the East Boston Neighborhood Health Center, and I founded a fellowship for kids at Easty High called the Mario Umana Public Service Fellowship, which provides local youth with the opportunities to get engaged in public service and to see public service as a viable career path. In the four years I've had with Representative Basil, he was a wonderful mentor to me, and he really did prepare me to be an effective advocate for East Boston on day one. I know I can step into this role and hit the ground running and, and continue to do what I love, which is being an effective and passionate advocate for East Boston. I humbly ask for your vote on March 3rd, and I thank you for joining me here tonight and allowing me to share my vision with you. Thank you. Como sabe, no es fácil, ¿verdad?, para traducir. Um, le pedí que fuera paciente para hablar, que hablara despacio, pero también se equivocó. Bueno, bueno, está bien, eso es paso a todo, así es ok. Um, él estaba diciendo, estaba mencionando que él es una persona que ha trabajado acá en la oficina del representante, que es el que se está sustituyendo ahora por estas elecciones especiales. Uh, él ha estado trabajando por cuatro años, también él es un miembro muy activo en la comunidad. Él ha estado uh, también como uno de los miembros de directores en el, en el YMCA, que creo que es un lugar que todos conocen. También en Harborside, que es un programa que está en la Escuela Mario Man Academy. Eh, él también mencionaba que ha trabajado aquí en el gimnasio de la Paris también y en algunas otras agencias con las que él ha estado participando. Así que él estaba diciendo que también él fue a estudiar a la East Boston High School, que creo que todos conocemos, y vive en la calle um, Y Street en East Boston y también su madre es una persona que también apoya mucho a la comunidad y es uno de los miembros del, del consejo de East Eagle, eh, que creo que también todos conocemos esa parte. Así que él ha sido un miembro muy activo y él también dice de que cree que está preparado para esta posición. Así que, bueno, les dejamos a ustedes, ¿verdad?, el derecho a que ustedes puedan decidir por, por lo que han escuchado esta noche acerca de él, pero él dice que ha servido mucho a la comunidad. Muchas gracias. Joan Pomodoro. Joan, I'm sorry. Joan Pomodoro. Hi. Um, all my fans couldn't be here tonight. They're stuck in Boston with all the traffic. But uh, if you hear this loud pounding noise, that's my heart. Um, I, I am not a politician. I'm really impressed with these guys, very much so. Um, and I'm also impressed with everyone coming out tonight. Um, my name is Joanne Pomodoro, and I'm 62 years old, and I'm proud of that. Um, I've grown up in East Boston. Pardon me? God bless you. We're in the wrong badge, though. Um, I grew up in East Boston. I went to school in East Boston. I went to school in the North End. I went to college at Northeastern University and graduate school at BU for the School of Social Work. Um, quiero, buenas tardes a todos y quiero decirles esta tarde que yo no soy una persona de la parte política, eh, pero soy una persona que me, está postul me estoy postulando para esta posición. Tengo 65 años de edad. 65, 62. Ah, <laughs> oh, she's young. Sí, ella está muy joven. Ella tiene 62, <laughs> 62 años de edad, pero ella dice que quiere, está feliz de lanzarse esta candidatura para servir a la comunidad de East Boston. Ella dice que creció aquí en East Boston, que hizo su vida aquí en East Boston y que por eso quiere uh, ayudarles y apoyarles a ustedes. I just said that. Yeah, okay. Um, 65, I can, I can apply for Social Security. Uh, the reason I'm running are, are, are a couple of reasons, actually. Um, I'm very concerned about um, lost class or the middle class. Um, I'm concerned about um, not getting enough uh, opportunities to have an advantage to moving into some of these new developments. Either the money, they're too expensive or they're below my, um, I, I make some money as a social worker, but not a lot. I work at Mass General, I work with uh, PTSD, depression, mood disorders. I'm seeing more and more of that in children. My concern is what are we doing for our children to help them with mood disorders that get diagnosed with bipolar more often than not. And it's not bipolar, let me tell you. It's PTSD, it's anxiety. It's a lot of things that are going on. I'm a specialist in PTSD. I can tell you, number one, I'm concerned about over-medicating our children. I want to work on um, confidence, self-esteem programs, getting music back in the system. Obesity is important, you know, it's on the rise. We have no more gym in the schools. We need all of that back. Um, I, I am an, an athlete, I'm a 
10 seconds. I'm an uh, eight-time <laughs> world racquetball champion, all after the age of 34, a disco dancer. <laughs> um, and I love life, and I love comedy, so everybody, everybody, just laugh, okay? Have a good night. Thank you. <laughs> Estaba diciendo que yo le ponía como que muchos años de edad, ¿verdad? Y dice que, que no tiene mucho. Ella estaba diciendo también que ella está corriendo esa candidatura porque ella está cansada de ver que la clase media eh, siempre estamos sufriendo uh, cosas, ¿verdad? Que somos los que más padecemos las circunstancias de la situación económica y que por esa situación ella que está corriendo esta candidatura para que uh, asegurarse que nosotros vamos a estar mejor económicamente, pero también saludablemente. Ella dice que ha estado trabajando también con los niños que tienen algún desorden mental. Ella dice que cada día ve este crecimiento de más niños con estos problemas por situaciones económicas y que no se recibe y no se le da el apoyo adecuado. Por eso ella está corriendo y quiere que apoyen a ella. Muchas gracias. Joe Ricciaro. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Joe Ruggiero, and I'm a candidate for state rep here in East Boston. I just wanted to take a, take a moment to thank the organizers and thank all of you for coming out here. I know the weather hasn't been too cooperative, and we've had a tough winter, but thank you all for your commitment to the neighborhood. Um, uh, I'm a small business owner in the neighborhood. My family and I have a funeral home right up in Orient Heights. We have small business owners. I've done a lot of work in the community of various different nonprofit groups throughout the neighborhood. I went to high school here in East Boston. I went to Savio Prep. After going to Savio, I decided to join the family business. I went to school and you know, got a degree in business and, and, uh, and funeral home management. And five years ago, my life changed when I got sober. I was someone that, as, as a teenager and a young adult, I had, I had, I got caught up in, in substance abuse, and I was able to turn my life around. And when I turned my life around, I, was, I, I really felt it important to get involved in the community and to get involved in trying to make a difference in East Boston. We have a great neighborhood here, and we have a lot of great organizations. And it was important for me to get involved and, and talk to the kids in the neighborhood. Try to mentor them so they didn't make the same mistakes I did. And I got involved and I coached Little League and I got on the board of Little League. I got involved in some small business programs because my, I myself as a small business owner know the struggles it takes to opening up a small business and going through the licensing and permitting processes. And when you want to renovate, how, how hard it is to get funding sometimes or going through BRA approval and all those things that come to small businesses. And I, and, and I got involved in senior groups because I, I had a grandparent. I had a, I had a grandmother who struggled with taking care of my grandfather at the end of his life and, and the cost of nursing homes and medication. And it was important to talk to people and, and find out what was going on. And, and I feel this election is very important to the future of our neighborhood. We need to make sure that we, we really hear from everybody in the community and really have good lines of commu communications so our next representative can represent everybody in the community. And thank you for having me. Buenas noches, mi nombre es Joe Ruggerio, yo estoy, me he postulado para representante de la Cámara de Boston. Primero que todo, le quiero dar las gracias a todos los organizadores de este evento. Yo sé que el, el clima no nos ha ayudado mucho, pero muchas gracias por las personas que vinieron aquí esta noche. Eh, yo, soy, yo nací aquí en Boston, soy de Boston, eh, soy propietario de un pequeño negocio en Orin Heights, la funeraria eh, Ruggerio's Funeral Home. Eh, yo sé las, las dificultades que poseen los pequeños comerciantes manejando sus negocios, cumpliendo eh, nómina y ese tipo de, de problemas. También eh, sé que es una, hay una necesidad muy grande en la comunidad para nuestra juventud, para las personas de la tercera edad. Eh, he estado muy involucrado en la comunidad. A, hace cinco años yo tuve un problema eh, de drogadicción, eh, toqué fondo y cuando después de mi recuperación eh, decidí que yo tenía que ayudarle a la, a la juventud de la comunidad. Me he involucrado en las actividades de los jóvenes, en, en pequeño, en béisbol, en ligas infantiles. Eh, he trabajado mucho en la comunidad y estoy muy interesado en, en unir a la comunidad. Estoy como representante. Eh, pienso que todas las personas de la comunidad deben de tener una voz, deben de tener acceso y de, voy a trabajar para abrir las líneas de comunicación con todo el mundo eh, y espero que me den su voto el próximo 3 de marzo. Muchas gracias. Luz Capiquero. <laughs> Try it this way, okay? okay? All right. Good evening, everyone. My name is Luz Capiquero. Buenas noches a todo el mundo. Mi nombre es Luz Capicho. 
I'm a lifelong resident of East Boston. I grew up here. I started school here. I went to the Bradley School uh, for kindergarten before going to uh, St. Mary Star of the Sea School, uh, Latin Academy for two years before returning to Savio, and then uh, Suffolk University for undergrad and for law school. Ok, yo he estudiado acá y también estudié en la high school de acá desde pequeño y estudié también dos años en la Boston Latin Academy um, y estudié también en la universidad. Uh, after uh, high school, I enlisted in the United States Army where I spent eight years in the U.S. Army Reserves um, and then I was lucky enough after law school to be accepted into the United States Army JAG Corps uh, where I served on active duty for four and a half years as a JAG attorney and I'm still currently serving in the Reserves uh, in the United States Army at the rank of captain. Oh, él ha estado trabajando también en el, um, eh, ¿cómo se llama? Um, sal, el, en el ejército eh, y um, pues ha estado trabajando por cuatro años y medio, four years. Ok, cuatro años y medio. Entonces él ha servido mucho a la comunidad y espero que el 3 de marzo dé mi, el voto para mí. Uh, most recently, I've been working as an attorney at the uh, Soldiers' Home in Chelsea, um, their legal counsel, working on all the uh, legal issues that we face, uh, dealing with the residents who are all veterans, and also it's a state agency, so dealing with all the issues of being a state-run agency, including the budgetary process, um, labor issues, environmental issues, contracting issues. Um, all Yeah. Eh, se olvida que tenemos que traducir <risa> él dice que ha estado trabajando también en el, en el um, ¿cómo se llama en esta posición en Chelsea pero él está eh, ha hecho como que mucho servicio para la comunidad ha estado en muchos uh, programas específicos para ayudar a toda la comunidad, no a una sola uh, persona, pero en muchas áreas Uh, the reason why I'm running, um, plain and simple, is that I want to continue to work in public service. My family has a long history of public service. I have a history of public service, and that's all I want to continue. I want to give back to this community, which has given me so much, given me my family, given me my friends, my education, my job. I just want to do good things for East Boston, and that's why I'm running for this office. Ok, yo quiero, quiero también decirles que una de las razones que me tiene a mí corriendo esta candidatura es porque quiero dar a la comunidad mucho de lo que a mí también me han dado. He recibido mucho de esta comunidad y es por eso que yo quiero trabajar para servirles mejor a ustedes, brindarles mi apoyo y ayudarles en lo que más necciten. Thank you all very much and uh, now we'll start taking some questions. So thank you. Muchas gracias a todos y ahora vamos a esperar sus preguntas. Great, thank you Kenneth for all your introductions there. Straight into the questions here. So our first question is actually from uh, from Zumix, this founder Madeline Zizinski. I don't know if she's here tonight, but uh, she did uh, submit a question in regards to the arts. The question is: Arts and culture play an important role in the fabric of East Boston. From the youth-based program like Zumix, which engages more than 1,000 youth. Uh, each year to arts and education in our schools, to dance programs like Baju Call, Beverly Richards, Veronica Robles, to the vibrant public arts at, at Harbor Arts. The arts help East Boston residents connect, celebrate, and ignite creativity, and they provide jobs and economic growth as well. You know, over the past two decades, the state's investment in arts has dropped. What role do you think arts play in East Boston, and will you support increased state investment to bring the arts and culture sector? back to the levels in the past. Um, Medellin is uh, the summit Arte y Cultura juegan un papel importante en, el, en la trama de East Boston. Desde el programa basado en la juventud, Sumex se ha acoplado a más de, a, a más de un, mil personas al año a la educación artística en las escuelas, a bailar programas como Bajo Cole, Beverly, y, um, y Richard y Verónica Robles, a las artes públicas vibrantes en el puerto de artes. Las artes ayudan a, la, a los residentes de East Boston, con, conectan, celebran y, en, y encienden la creatividad y la proporciona, y la proporciona de empleo en el crecimiento económico. Así, sin embargo, en las últimas dos décadas, la inversión del Estado en las artes ha caído. ¿Qué papel cree que juegan las artes en East Boston y va a apoyar? ¿Va usted a apoyar mayormente esta inversión estatal para llevar las artes al sector cultural y a, las, y a los niveles en el pasado? Uh, 
Thank you, and thank you for that question. What a great question. Uh, it, it, it is no secret that East Boston has a very burgeoning uh, art scene here, and I think it's incredibly important that we help foster that, that we help that grow. I think it's become such a big part of the community. If anyone has been uh, down at the shipyard, I mean, you know how incredible that can be. Um, I remember Zoomix uh, in its infancy, and to see them now in the firehouse, an abandoned firehouse, to see the programming that they put forth at helping kids in this neighborhood uh, is incredible. Uh, I was just there uh, recently, some of my fellow candidates were there as well uh, for a concert they had uh, in the evening. What an amazing time, what a very cool concept that it was. Uh, the night before that, I was at uh, a fundraiser for the East Boston Improv, the East Boston Playhouse, I'm sorry, it was an improv night. And uh, I was just blown away by the talent and the commitment and the passion that everyone had for that. I think arts are incredibly important. I think arts in the schools are incredibly important. It's an intangible, it's something that's putting East Boston on the map, and I would be happy to support it as a state representative by being an advocate and helping to prioritize that uh, in the state budget. So thank you for that question, and uh, thank you. Yo quiero decir muchas gracias y que estoy, uh, me siento muy responsable para apoyar en todas estas áreas. Contestando a esta pregunta, quiero decirles que si me convirtiera en el representante de Estado, que fuera su representante, haría todo lo necesario para apoyarles en estas áreas que creo necesariamente para ustedes y absolutamente sí pueden contar con mi apoyo. Muchas gracias. Ah, Camilo Fernández. Thank you. That's an amazing question. It's not a secret what music, arts do to us. It's the right of some, what happened outside when I was performing some songs and music. People acknowledge what's happening over here. I had the opportunity to work in Sumix five years ago. And I understood how challenges and hard and tough is to bring money, support, and help. So absolutely, we need to bring that support, that help, that money is already established back to the community. No es un secreto lo que la música representa para los humanos. Mira lo que pasó afuera. Empecé a tocar este instrumento y llamó la atención. Son las maneras humanas de expresión. Tuve la oportunidad hace cinco años de trabajar en Sumix, tremenda organización, y entendí lo difícil, lo desafiante que es traer dinero, apoyo y colaboración para estas organizaciones. Tenemos que enfocar en traer el dinero que ya nos pertenece para esta juventud, estas organizaciones y para la música. Gracias. Adrian Mago. <laughs> Thank you. This is a great question. Uh, I'm sorry. Okay. Technical difficulties, folks. Sorry. <laughs> Needless to say, the arts are really transformative uh, for, for young kids and adults alike in the community. I know I was a Zoomix kid myself. I learned how to play the drums, the piano, sing in a chorus, although that didn't last too long. Um, <laughs> but needless to say, we need to invest in arts in our community. It's great that we have Zoomix and we have an outlet for kids to go learn music. But kids who want to pursue theater or pursue arts, we need those resources here. I'm a big fan of the East Boston Playhouse. You should all check it out and support that organization because I have little cousins right now who go to Charlestown to do theater, and that to me is unacceptable. I'd love to see Harbor Arts partner with the AP art class at East Boston High School and create uh, a youth component so that kids who want to pursue arts can do that through Harbor Arts. Ah, yo quiero decirles que firmemente esto toca mi corazón cuando se habla acerca de jóvenes y cuando se habla acerca de música. Porque yo crecí también acá en esta comunidad. También quiero que sepan que he sido parte de Sumex. He apoyado mucho al programa de Sumex en muchas actividades. También he apoyado mucho a las organizaciones como crecí aquí. También formé parte de Sumex. Pero también tengo un sobrino que tiene que ir hasta Charlestown porque aquí no hay suficientes programas para que ellos sean atendidos. Así que sí, claramente voy a apoyar en esa área si yo fuera representante. We do have a strong art scene here in the community. 
Artist Lofts, Harbor Arts, which I'm told is the largest collection of public art, outdoor public art in New England. Someday I envision ferries coming from the Institute of Contemporary Art in South Boston straight to Harbor Arts at Eastie. That to me would be vibrant, a vibrant East Boston. But I'd also like to see more public art in our public uh, open spaces, our parks, because that to me is a deterrent for things like litter. Uh, needless to say, I will be a strong advocate for arts up on Beacon Hill because they are transformative resources. Thank you. Bien, yo quiero decirles también que apo apoyo lo que es el área del arte académico para todos los jóvenes. Y una de las cosas que yo quisiera hacer si yo fuera su representante es buscar por locales para que tengamos más espacios abiertos para que nuestros joven puedan, jóvenes puedan participar en la música y puedan aprender a tocar cualquier tipo de instrumento. Y creo firmemente que sí es un fuerte apoyo que debería de apoyarles y creo que sí les apoyaría y muchas gracias. So I'm a victim of um, being forced to take piano when I was five years old. And uh, um, I'm glad that my parents made me do that because today I, I um, can play classical piano. I can play the guitar and it's helped me out a lot. I think it helped me in school to take piano lessons. Um, I was probably the first undiagnosed ADHD patient because um, I'm 60 years old, so they didn't have ADHD back then. Um, we need arts back in the community. We need it in the schools. I had it when I was growing up, and we need it back in there. We need music. We need theater. We need, um, you know, all types of music. We need dance. We need other means of expression. Um, music actually is a great way for um, kids to develop their brains. Stop. S T O P. Okay. That's brain develop. Oh, Thirty seconds. Oh, trick. Um, music is a great way to develop calmness in, in the body. And that's well known in neurofeedback, in neuropsychology. And I think kids are so stressed out these days that they really need something. And music is one of the most beautiful things. It's universal language. If we can have that back, that in the arts and everything else, stop now. Um, I think that's a benefit. And I think we need to apply for grants. Uh, and, and change some of the funding. Thank you so much. Yo también estoy de acuerdo con lo que están preguntando acerca de música. Fue una de las personas también que tuvo que sufrir esta situación cuando yo estaba pequeña, pero ahora estoy dispuesta a que si yo fuera su representante, yo les apoyaría en esto, creo firmemente que la música es algo que nos ayuda a nuestro espíritu, a nuestra alma, pero también a nuestro cuerpo. Específicamente cuando tenemos muchos niños que están sufriendo algún tipo de problemas, situaciones, quizás físicas, mentales. Tengo entendido que la música ayuda mucho en muchas áreas a sanar a estos jóvenes y a mantenerlos um, ocupados. Y creo que sí, les apoyaría en esto. Creo que es algo en lo que deberíamos de trabajar todos. Muchas gracias. question that the eyes are, are very important to, to the upbringing of a child. Um, I, I'm someone that growing up I had piano lessons and I tried saxophone for a little bit and, uh, and, and, I, and, and it was something that the friends that I grew up with, they, they all had that opportunity and, uh, and we need to make sure that we take, a, a, we take a holistic approach on how we raise our children and, and the opportunities that we provide them. Um, you know, I have a, a beautiful girlfriend that went to Boston Arts Academy. And, uh, and, and that shouldn't be the only place a child should, can be able to get arts in high school. Um, it shouldn't be the only place that child's can, children can get arts. And, and not every child has the opportunity to go to, go to places after school. You know, as someone that's been involved in after school programs, eh, Yo sé que el tema de los artes es un tema muy importante. Eh, tenemos que brindar estas oportunidades de que, desde que los niños son jóvenes, son pequeños. Yo cuando era niño tuve la oportunidad de tomar algunas clases de piano y algunas otras clases, unos instrumentos, y pienso que es muy importante eso. Tenemos que tomar una, mirarlo de un punto de vista holístico y cómo levantamos nuestros hijos y cómo les brindamos oportunidades. Mi eh, hermosa novia eh, estudió en la, en la 
en el bachillerato en la Escuela de Artes de Boston y no pienso que esa debe ser la única oportunidad donde una persona que quiera aprender los artes sea la única opción que tiene. Yo pienso que tienen que haber otras oportunidades para estas personas. Not everyone has the opportunity to have their child in after school programs that, that offer after school activities that offer arts. We need to make sure that it's in the schools and we also need to make sure that, that we have that we have welcoming places for people to go. And we have we have opportunities to, to develop people's culture here in Boston. And we've had cultural centers closed in the past and we need to make sure that we can support them and develop them to make sure that people have the opportunity to, to really support their culture and educate people on the other cultures that are represented here in East Boston. No todas las personas, no todas las familias tienen la oportunidad de enviar sus hijos a programas después de la escuela eh, que ofrezcan artes. Estos son programas que deben ser ofrecidos en las escuelas. Y tenemos que brindar estas oportunidades a los, a los jóvenes, porque es la manera en que vamos a, a sacar a los, a los jóvenes de los problemas. Yo apoyo el programa, un programa de artes para los jóvenes en la comunidad. So going sixth, I'm going to try to say something different than what everyone else has already said, but I'm so glad I get to do this. Um, my brother he is here, and he's a musician. I'm glad I get to embarrass him a little bit. Um, but he's in a band with three other East Boston residents. Uh, and one of the things that the arts do is they bring a community together. Going to his concerts and then seeing those folks when all other East Boston residents come to support local talent is really an inspiration to the entire community and keeps people involved. Ok, quiero decirles especialmente, primero quiero cambiar un poco la, la, pues, lo que dijeron los otros compañeros, ¿verdad? Eh, pero quiero decir que apoyo esto, claro que sí, pero también quiero decirles que tengo aquí a mi hermano, que es alguien que también estudió acá y que uh, está estudiando también uh, lo que es um, arte y me gustaría que todos tuvieran esta oportunidad. And uh, from doing uh, drama in high school myself, um, and one of the gentlemen that I did drama with in high school was uh, Anthony Gallardo, who now runs the uh, drama society at East Boston High School. And recently I spoke to him because he can't even afford uh, to rent a van to take his students to a drama competition in order to compete, in order to keep drama in, in East Boston. Ok, una de las cosas que él dice que le sucedió a él es que cuando él estaba pequeño y él quería ser músico, eh, la persona que le daba las clases a él eh, quería tener una competencia de música, pero que no podía porque no tenían el dinero, los fondos para comprar los instrumentos, para tener esta, esta competición. Y eso es una de las cosas por las que él apoya esto. So from seeing what it does for our community and then seeing the difficulties that we're having, obviously I support the arts in East Boston and I will do everything I can as the state representative to connect people in the community, to keep arts going so that, you know, government isn't always the answer to these things, but to keep art going in our community. And the second thing is to work on funding to keep arts again in East Boston. Una de las cosas es que sí voy a apoyar porque he visto muchas dificultades, como dije, económicamente para que nuestros jóvenes puedan tener todo esto que necesitan para competir, para continuar creciendo académicamente y sobre todo en las cosas del arte. Si yo fuera su representante, yo lucharía para que nuestros jóvenes tuvieran más oportunidades, especialmente aquí en Boston, acerca de arte y música. Muchas gracias. Okay, the, uh, the second question here tonight is in regards to uh, licenses, driving licenses for undocumented residents. Uh, so many who have argued that offering licenses to undocumented residents will help ensure that they are sufficiently safe drivers to drive on our streets. It will increase state revenue through registry related fees and significantly increase the percent of these drivers to have actually have auto insurance. Do you agree with this? If so, and given Governor Baker's stated opposition to licenses for the undocumented immigrants, what would be your plan of action to make this initiative a reality? Uh, I will trans uh, voy a traducir la pregunta que él hizo en inglés y después van a contestar a ustedes, okay? Eh, para el español, la pregunta que él hizo ahorita es, Administradores, muchos han argumentado que ofrecer licencias de conducir a los residentes indocumentados ayudará a mantener las calles seguras porque han sido entrenados en el, en el manejo de sus autos y conocen las leyes de tránsito. También se ha dicho 
que aumentará los ingresos del Estado a través de las tarifas de, re, de registro relacionadas y aumentarán significativamente el porcentaje de estos conductores a tener un, segun, un segundo auto. ¿Está de acuerdo con estas aseveraciones? Si es así, y dada la oposición manif manifestada por el gobernador Charlie, Be Charlie Baker a las licencias de conducir para los inmigrantes indocumentados, ¿cuál sería su plan de acción para hacer realidad esta iniciativa? Camilo Hernández. Muchas gracias, muy buena pregunta. Sí, necesitamos la licencia de conducción. Fue el primer candidato que empezó a definir la licencia de conducción. Se necesita seguridad primero que todo. Saber quién es su vecino, quién maneja las calles, avenidas, en la parte de Massachusetts. No solo para condecorar esos humanos indocumentados, sino darle la oportunidad de participar que tengan una identificación para que contribuyan al sistema seguridad primero también para que inviertan al sistema a las calles ese dinero no se puede seguir guardando debajo del sofá tiene que circularse yes absolutely we need to bring the driver license to those human and documented I was the first candidate propose a driver license to those humans. Safety first. We need to know who is driving the streets, the roads, the highways, and who is your neighbor. We need to identify them. And not only that, circulate that money. That money needs to be invested in the community, society, and this beautiful place is Boston. I will bring back all the signatures that I collected a couple years ago to bring it over to the state house because they already exist we need to do that and I'm the only one if I need to tie my feet to the governor's office I will si sí, señores lo haré this is an easy an easy one for me I definitely support uh, driver's license for undocumented immigrants To me, it's really about safety. Everyone should have insurance. Folks are going to drive to work, go to the hospital, go to the supermarket, bring their kids to school. This is happening anyway. It's time we get them licensed, get them insured, get the revenue for the state. I would support the legislation that has stalled in the past few sessions at the State House, and I'd have no problem doing that. I'd have no problem taking the lead on that. Many more conservative states have done this, and I think it's about time Massachusetts steps up and provides these licenses for undocumented folks. Um, quiero decir que esto es algo muy fácil. Esta pregunta es muy fácil para mí porque definitivamente que estoy de acuerdo con eso. Para mí creo que todas las personas deberían de tener una licencia de conducir, ya que creo que es importante que usted pueda manejar para la escuela, para llevar a sus hijos al doctor si es que es, es necesario para el hospital. Entonces, por muchas cosas, por muchas razones, creo que es importante que usted tenga la licencia de conducir y por supuesto que si yo sería su representante, yo votaría que sí. Por las últimas dos secciones estoy de acuerdo con todo eso, porque la seguridad es lo más importante y claro que sí votaría para eso. Muchas gracias. Oh, that's a, this is a tough question. Um, the, way it's, the way it's proposed right now, I'm not sure I can agree with that. East Boston is uh, one of the highest rates of insurance. Um, we are, our rates are ridiculous in the area. They keep going up. We have too many um, drivers that come into our city. We don't know who they are. They come to the airport. They're traveling through our city, um, our area, in order to get to access to Route 1. I just think that right now I need to hear more. I think I need to understand it more. But as of right now, um, I, I, I'm not in support of it and don't hate me, but that's how I feel right now. I think you can write it better. I think we can um, understand a little better, but as of right now, our insurance rates are too high and they're gonna go up. And I don't want to see that for anybody right now, so that's my answer. 30 seconds. Um. Soy bien honesta y sé que me van a odiar por esto, pero quiero decir que yo no estoy de acuerdo con esto. Creo que es, es un tema que debería de estudiarse más 
y una que yo sepa más qué es lo que habría que haber al respecto, creo que quizás, pero de momento mi respuesta es yo no apoyaría eso si yo ganaría y fuera su representante. Estoy totalmente en desacuerdo con respecto a esto porque hay mucha gente manejando de aquí para allá, de allá para acá y que nosotros no sabemos quiénes son, si tienen documentos, licencias o no. Así que les digo la verdad, no estoy de acuerdo con esto. Gracias. To me, this is an easy issue, but it, it's an easy issue for a little bit of a different reason. Um, I don't see how somebody's documentation status um, affects how they drive. Uh, and, and I don't, you know, some of the things that I heard, I don't, you know, I don't think just because people do it, that means we should allow it. I think we should give people the opportunities to be successful here in, in, in the United States. We should give people the opportunities to get to work. We should give people the opportunities to get around the community, and it shouldn't be it shouldn't be judged based on someone's documentation. Uh, I, I think that you know if someone can pass a road test and someone can follow the rules of our road, then they deserve to have a driver's license in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Uh, I, I don't think that we need to tie someone's legal uh, immigration status to whether they can drive or, and operate a motor vehicle, and for that I, I will support driver's licenses. I think it's about building coalitions up at the state house. I don't think. Uh, chaining myself anywhere would, would do any good, but, it, but talking to other reps and being there and, and building relationships with like-minded reps that represented districts similar to ours can really help move this process forward. Este es un tema muy fácil para mí, eh, no por las razones que ustedes puedan pensar. Eh, yo pienso que una persona, la, la licencia de conducir no debe ser, no debe ser basada en el estatus eh, legal de una persona o no, si una persona tiene documentos o no. Yo pienso que una persona debe tener acceso a, a las oportunidades que brinda este país independientemente de cuál sea su estatus migratorio. Eh, yo pienso que las, las, para que las carreteras sean más seguras eh, es algo que yo apoyo y voy a apoyar. Eh, en la Cámara de Representantes eh, la forma de, de traer una solución a esto es crear coaliciones con otros representantes que representen áreas similares a, a la ciudad de Boston de Boston y crear grupos, coaliciones con ellos para juntos hacer algo. Eh, yo no pienso que tenga que amarrarme o encadenarme a ninguna silla para traer cambios, sino crear estas coaliciones. Yo apoyo la licencia de, de conducir para personas sin documentos legales. I'm also for it, um, for those reasons, the safety reasons, the money reasons, and all of that. And I also um, just want to say I think that this issue sometimes gets tied up with the bigger issue of immigration, and I think that it's uh, improperly tied to that issue. Um, our immigration system as a whole across the country, as we all know, is a huge problem, and it's something that isn't being taken care of by the federal government, and that's the issue. Folks we're talking about right now are already here. They're folks that are in America that are trying to work and trying to provide for their families. And anything we can do for those folks, I think we should do. And that's why I have no problem with this issue. Él está diciendo que él cree de que no tengamos nada que eh, tacar este tema a reducir porque cree firmemente que las personas deberían simplemente de por la seguridad de todos nosotros, cada uno tener su propia licencia, cada uno puede tener el derecho a conducir y creo que yo sí apoyaría eso, no, no veo nada malo en esto, creo que es algo en lo que nosotros deberíamos de, de trabajar y apoyar esto. Así que muchas gracias. One of my top priorities uh, for the first Suffolk District is reducing car insurance rates uh, for those of us here in East Boston. East Boston has some of the highest insurance rates of anywhere in the state. So I believe that this issue, which I am supportive of, makes sense for a variety of different reasons. I believe that it's a matter of public safety. We need to know who's behind the wheel and we need to make sure that that person is insured. And for me, I also think it's a matter of fairness. We have folks undocumented that are driving. They're getting, they need to get to work. They need to take their children to school. They need access to health care. Again, we need to make sure that we know uh, who is behind the wheel and that car is properly insured because we can't rely on people to take the MBTA everywhere they need to go. So I think this makes sense for a variety of different reasons and I would be happy to support it in the state legislature. Thank you.
yo creo por diferentes maneras y en todo lo que la mayoría acordamos es que una de las razones más importantes es que deberíamos de bregar con esto, es una de la seguridad, es lo más importante. Y creo que también las personas necesitan tener su carro para conducir, como dijo, mencionó alguien anteriormente. Necesitamos el carro para llevar a nuestros niños al doctor, al hospital, a la escuela, por muchas razones. Pero lo más importante es que también va a ayudar económicamente como también a la seguridad pública. Una persona conduciendo con su propia licencia de conducir no va a tener miedo de estar manejando y lo encuentran sin su licencia. Así que creo que por la seguridad estoy de acuerdo. Gracias. East Boss, many East Boston residents have suffered with all the MBTA's problems with the snow. Many say it's a lack of investment in the T that has caused the recent issues. Would you support raising taxes if those new funds were earmarked specifically for making improvements, needed improvements to the T? If not, and given that the T has recently stated that it's virtually impossible to lower their fixed operating costs, how do you propose fixing the T? Joanne. Right now, I think that uh, it starts from the top to think who's in charge and who's running the, the T, the MBTA. I know that um, I worked at the Social Law Library. It's a private membership library for attorneys. And the MBTA was a member, and uh, they claim they're nonprofit. And yet, the salary for uh, from the top down is, is uh, six figures. Um, the current person running the, um, the MBTA, I think, is, excuse me, is an embarrassment. Uh, I think that um, funding, I don't think we should be burdened with funding the uh, MBTA. I, I just don't. I think that we've tried to do our best to help out the MBTA, but I think there's a bigger problem. And I think monies are being wasted on salaries where it could be, it could be uh, used. 10 seconds. It could be used in other areas. I think it needs an overhaul, and um, I think it's a waste of our taxpayer money at the present time. So the solution is to uh, revamp it and start from the top. Thank you. Yo creo que el dinero que se está siendo utilizado para esto debería de ser utilizado en otras áreas. Así que yo creo no estoy de acuerdo con esto, por el dinero que se está gastando con taxes y eso debería de ser utilizado definitivamente en áreas más necesarias, ya más que todo viendo cómo estamos con esta economía. Así que no estoy de acuerdo que se utilice el dinero acá. Um, está... okay. Ah, la pregunta era la número cuatro y queríamos decir nosotros que la pregunta que él hizo en inglés a ellos era administradores durante el mes pasado muchos de los residentes de East Boston han sufrido con todos los problemas del, del MBTA y con la nieve ah, muchos dicen que es una falta de, de inversión en el, en el uh, transporte público que ha causado los problemas recientes apoyaría aumentar los impuestos si esos nuevos fondos de desti de destina se destinaron específicamente para hacer mejoras al, al transporte público, si no es así, y dado que recientemente ti gerente general, el doctor Beverly Scott, dijo que es prácticamente imposible reducir los costos operativos fijos en el MBTA, ¿cómo se propone la, la, a fijar la, a fijar la, la tarifa? The T has been notoriously underfunded for decades. Um, we, we haven't addressed structural issues with the T in a very, very long time. And, and that's something that we need to take a serious look at. We need to take a comprehensive look at how we're spending money on the T and really focus on updating its infrastructure. Um, we have the oldest um, public transportation system in the world, in the country. And, uh, and we need to focus on how to, how to bring that into, into the current day. Uh, and, and it's far, far, way too far behind. Uh, I, I think that we need to work on, on, on 
making it a, a regional approach to and really pulling in people from all over the region. It, it, it's a huge, huge, huge um, economic stimulus to the to the to the metro Boston metropolitan area to make sure that people have access to public transportation. And it's something that needs to be done. This isn't this isn't just a, a benefit to people. It's a necessity for, for a lot a lot of people to get to work. And it's typically the people that can't afford any other form of transportation. And then it's the most economically sensible to take the T. We can't take that away from them. And we need to we need to strengthen it for us to be a, a, a real to, for our state to really move forward. El sistema de transporte público es uno de los más antiguos del país. Es un sistema que ha estado sin fondos por muchas décadas. No es un tema de ahora. No es un tema que se va a resolver quitándolo y cortándolo. Eh, es un tema que tenemos que traer un eh, trabajar de una manera regional porque no solamente la ciudad de Boston es afectada por esto, sino la área regional. Eh, las personas que usan, los usuarios del sistema de transporte público, son las personas que tradicionalmente no tienen los fondos para tener su propio carro y andar en carro, sino que dependen realmente del transporte público. Tenemos que trabajar juntos y, y mejorar la infraestructura y traerle fondos a hacerlo. No podemos cortarlo ni pararlo. Eh, y de nuevo, es una forma, tenemos que trabajar regionalmente para que el, el sistema de transporte público sea, en el área metropolitana, sea mejorado y sea uno de los mejores en el país. Now, Paul, I just want to clarify. I think the, the specific question was, uh, would you, would I support increasing taxes to fix the MBTA? Okay. Okay, so that's an easy one. The answer to that is absolutely not. I'm not going to make people pay more taxes than they already do to fix something that should have been broken in the first place. So that's, that's the easy answer to that one. Um, we have to look from the top on down of how our money was spent and how our money is being spent from here going forward. This is Massachusetts. We pay a lot of taxes. Everyone knows it. And people don't mind paying taxes if they know what their money is going to and if it's properly being spent. The MBTA is the perfect example of people not feeling like they're getting their money's worth out of what they're putting into where they live. So the answer is absolutely not. And we need to look at our inefficiencies and the way we spend money, salaries, and again, just kind of what we've been spending money on with revamping the MBTA before we even come close to increasing any taxes in Massachusetts. Okay, la pregunta fue que si yo estaba de acuerdo en que se aumentara la tarifa de, ta de taxes, que nos sacaran a nosotros los taxes, ¿verdad?, para el MBTA, y estoy totalmente en desacuerdo, no estoy de acuerdo con eso. Creo que deberíamos de eh, eh, evaluar en qué es las áreas más necesarias que necesitamos invertir el dinero y cómo nos van a beneficiar. Así que si yo fuese el, su candidato, su representante, yo haría eso y trabajaría en esa área para ver en dónde necesitamos el dinero y que nos va a traer beneficios a todos nosotros. Thank you. Given the events of the past few weeks, uh, it's clear that the MBTA has been mismanaged for far too long. With a $1.9 billion operating budget, with 50% of that going to things other than infrastructure, it's clear that this is an unsustainable problem. We have to prioritize. We have to prioritize what is going on with the MBTA. We can't kick the can down the line any longer. We can't wait for the Olympics to come in and save the T. The time is now. We need to prioritize. East Boston relies on the T as much, if not more, than any other neighborhood uh, in the city of Boston. The difference is, if the T's not running, you can't get to work. And if you're already in town, you can't get home. We have the Boston Harbor separating us. If you live somewhere else, you could walk home. I have called on the MBTA to release a contingency plan for a short-term solution that will provide buses that they're ready to go at a moment's notice. But we need to take a longer look, and for me, as a state representative, everything is on the table to fix the MBTA. Para mí, yo creo que eh, el, el área ahora de transporte público no están haciendo un buen trabajo y creo que deberíamos llevarlo a la mesa y debería de ser discutido, porque creo firmemente que no están haciendo un buen trabajo. Creo que deberíamos de ver cómo es que empezamos ahora a trabajar en el área del transporte para mejorarlo, pero de una manera que sea lo más pronto posible, porque no están haciendo un buen trabajo. Por ejemplo, tenemos el transporte público nosotros ahora, donde tenemos que tener una espera muy grande, ya sea del tren o ya sea del bus, 
personas que están aquí en East Boston y tienen que moverse a trabajar, no pueden hacerlo. Personas que están afuera de la ciudad, que están en sus trabajos, quieren moverse para acá y no pueden hacerlo por motivos de eh, la tardanza mucho de los trenes o de los bases. Tenemos que poner esto sobre la mesa nuevamente y tenemos que discutirlo y hacer que esto cambie para bien de nuestro transporte. Como representante trabajaría en esa área. Muchas gracias. Please don't fall asleep. Say well, well, this is an easy one. No more taxes. It's a matter of transparency. The budget, the project, implementation has to be clear, transparent, to the communities of Boston, to the people in Massachusetts. The money is there. I can throw you numbers, but the money is already there. Transparency, honestly. No more taxes. I'm a T-rider myself. I don't have a vehicle. No coche, no carro. And I love taking the tea in the bus. Voy a ser honesto. Esto es un aspecto de transparencia. No more impuestos. Voy me voy a poner a eso. El dinero ya está establecido. Hace muchos años. Y los que vienen. Como su representante, programas de transparencia. Esos programas, esa lista. Estaciones, sus proyectos tienen que ser claros a la comunidad y a la gente de Massachusetts. Yo no tengo carro y me fascina tomar el tren y el bus. No se duerman. Muchas gracias. Investing in our transportation infrastructure will certainly be a priority for me as your next state representative because I see transportation infrastructure and economic opportunity tied hand in hand. It's not, and clearly we saw that the past few days when the T just shut down and wouldn't let people get to work. But things like the red-blue connector and ensuring that the blue line stops at the Silver Line at Airport Station, that's going to give East Boston residents access to good-paying jobs in the innovation sectors of Cambridge and in Boston. We need to make that happen. Uh, Governor Baker and Speaker DeLeo have already said that there will be no new taxes and no new fees this upcoming year. So at this point, we need to work within the parameters of what's been said. I would work with the Governor and the Speaker to see where we could free up monies. And I would also make sure that we can reallocate resources. That way, transportation infrastructure is a priority, and that's what I'm committed to doing as your next state representative. Thank you. Yo quiero decir que como su representante, si fuera el caso que yo ganara a la Casa Estatal, yo apoyaría y una de las cosas que fuera y yo tomaría como prioridad sería eh, invertir en el área del transporte público, ya que tenemos un déficit um, con el transporte público en la tardanza muchas de las veces y creo que es bien importante que nosotros demos prioridad a esta área del transporte público. Así que si yo fuera su representante, por supuesto que sí, apoyo eso y eh, trataría la manera de que no se pusiera más taxes al transporte público, pero que tuviera una mejora del transporte público. Y estoy dispuesto a trabajar junto con el gobernador Charlie Baker para apoyar esta área y trabajar y asegurarnos que esto va a estar saliendo bien. Ok, muchas gracias. Uh, this next question is from John Cass. If you were not running in this race, which candidate would you cast your vote for and why? La número 5 de la pregunta es para el señor John Cass. Si no se ejecuta en la carrera, ¿qué candidato le emitiría su voto y por qué? Al señor John <laughs> I'd write myself in. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There's, there's, there's six good candidates out here, six great candidates that love and care about the neighborhood. Uh, um, there's no doubt about that. Um, and all of us have a little different story behind us, and all of us have some, some different experiences. You know, some people have. I, I'm a small business owner, I've done a, a lot of hands-on work in the community, I've had some life struggles, I, I know how it is to be down and out, um, and, and, and I know how it is to really have to work and build a small business and the effort you put into it and working 24-7 to try to make something work and to make it all work out. Um, and, and other candidates up here have experienced uh, working with government, have experienced working all over the place, and uh, your mic isn't working. The mic's not working? Oh, I got you. All right. 
the six great candidates up here, and I'm just honored to be one of them. Thank you. Eh, yo escribiría mi propio nombre en la papeleta. Eh, aquí hay seis candidatos eh, que realmente son todos muy buenos candidatos, que todos traen a la mesa algo diferente, una experiencia diferente, eh, una, un, un amor por la comunidad. Eh, mi experiencia es como pequeño comerciante, yo sé lo que es el trabajo, lo que toma, eh, he estado en situaciones personales muy difíciles, yo sé lo que se siente estar, tocar fondo y volver a salir adelante, eh, pero aquí hay seis grandes candidatos. Gracias. Uh, yeah, Joe has to uh, head out here right now, but maybe he wants to say the last few words. I just, nothing to do with anything else. I had a prior engagement um, that I have to go to. So I just wanted to thank everybody for attending here. I'm not going to steal anybody else's time, but I just wanted to say thank you all for attending here, and thank you for having me here, and thank you folks for putting it on. Thank you. Eh, lamentablemente tengo un compromiso previo uh, por el cual me tengo que ir, no quiero quitarle tiempo a nadie, solo quiero darle las gracias a todos ustedes por estar aquí, muchas gracias a los organizadores, muchas gracias a todos. I wish I had a prior engagement so I didn't answer this one. Yeah. <laughs> Good for you. Yeah. I would have got out of here. Um, I think this question brings in uh, into light really, uh, I think, something that's on the minds of a lot of people in East Boston, which is um, this is a very tight race among six people with deep ties in the community, and everyone kind of knows everybody, um, which is where I think this question really is coming from. Um, from me personally, from knowing these guys, and from knowing everyone in East Boston, I can say that if I, I, I think honestly, if I wasn't voting for myself, um, that I would be, oh, 30, okay. <laughs> los otros 30 minutos que le quedaban <risa> pero um, él dice que con su carrera por supuesto <risa> por supuesto que él está de acuerdo con la respuesta y, y, y cree que es un firme candidato para apoyar a todas las decisiones pero ya no quiso seguir contestando porque él uh, le dijeron que tenía 30 segundos <risa> ok uh, th this is a very very easy question uh, if anyone has been on Facebook or open discussion, uh, we have seen the work that Paul Rogers has done. I would write in Paul Rogers, everybody. Um, no, just to, just to echo on that, it is a difficult question, and I appreciate it being asked. Uh, everyone running is running for the right reasons. Everyone loves this community very much, and everybody wants to see it succeed. I think each has, uh, and, and has his and her own strength, and um, I'm going to leave it at that. All very good qualified candidates that I'm happy to call a friend, so thank you. Quiero decir que todos los candidatos que estamos acá tenemos muchas cualidades para seguir compitiendo y no voy a decir pues nada negativo, sino que voy a decir que todos estamos acá por lo mismo y pues por supuesto que apoyaría a, mis candid a nuestros candidatos. Camilo. This is an easy one for me. I would choose you. <laughs> it's your time for that hope, community hope, and for that change. I will choose you. It's your time. Yo les escogería a ustedes por ese cambio que todos estos años han pedido y por esa esperanza. Los escogería a ustedes. Hoy y siempre. Gracias. the others have said there's six great candidates in this race all are qualified and I think all would do a great job um, if I wasn't running I throw my vote to my good friend Luis Capicchio and I'll tell you why both my sister and my brother are veterans of the Marine Corps I have the utmost respect for our veterans they make incredible unbelievable sacrifices to go protect the freedoms that we have that we have right here tonight the fact that we're running that you get to participate in the democratic democratic process and vote so the fact that he's a veteran and I know he'd get up there in the state house and pick up the torch right where Rep Basil left off, which is exactly what I intend to do as well. Lou would have my vote. Bien, 
yo quiero decir que todos somos buenos candidatos y todos tenemos la, um, los títulos para correr una buena candidatura, pero quiero decirles que si yo no ganara la representación de Massachusetts, yo se la daría al señor Luz Cap Cap Capicho por una razón, porque él es un veterano. Y para mí alguien que sirve a la comunidad, pues es alguien que merece mi respeto, si le daría mi voto a él, dejaría que él ganara. Todos somos buenos, pero si fuera que yo no gano, que gane él. Muchas gracias. I gotta follow that. I should have went first. Um, I feel like we're on the family feud. Uh, I would. Um, I'm impressed with everybody here at this table too, and I too have. Um, my nephew is a Marine, and uh, he served in Afghanistan. So I thank Lou for his service, and every veteran here, and anyone who supports them. Um, I think that everybody here has a good. You know, has a good background in there, and their hearts are in the right places. So I think anybody that you elect will be great at the job. But I hope you you elect me because I'm prettier than any of these guys for sure. Yo también quiero decir que si yo todos estamos haciendo buen trabajo y que todos atrás de nosotros tenemos una carrera, pero quiero decirles también que si yo no quedara elegible como su representante, yo quisiera decirles que también daría el voto al señor Luz Capicho por una razón, porque también yo tengo un hijo que está en el army, que está en el ejército, así que sé lo el respeto que tengo a esta gente, pero también quisiera decir que me gustaría que ganen, que voten por mí. Muchas gracias. Okay, I think we have time for one last question. I promise this will be the last question. I know everyone has schedules to get to and personal lives to live. So um, we've got one question here. Um, so I'm going to assume that at this point in the, in the race that each of you know your fellow candidates pretty well. Point out a position uh, of one of your fellow candidates uh, that they have taken that you feel is wrong and explain why you feel they are wrong and how you feel on the issue. Ok, vamos a... Tenemos el tiempo para hacer una última pregunta y esta es la pregunta número 6. Y esto dice así. Administradores, vamos a asumir que ustedes conocen muy bien a los otros candidatos para esta contienda. Señale la posición más importante que de otro candidato para que, que para usted esté mal o esté equivocada. Por favor, ¿nos puede explicar el por qué piensa que está mal? Yeah. All right, I get to go first on this one, great. Um, uh, you know, I, I, I can't get away with not answering a question twice in a row, right? So I guess I have to answer this one. Um, so uh, I think um, more so than disagreeing with my fellow candidates, it's a matter of prioritization where I kind of put my priorities. Um, and I think from hearing some uh, stuff from the other candidates, um, you know, a few of the issues that are very important to me, really, I just haven't heard them talk a lot about and don't know their position on it. So I'll say uh, that, you know, that includes uh, uh, just not talking about, I guess, as much as I like to when people ask me questions and everything. Um, so I talk a lot about the, obviously, legal issues and uh, immigration issues, education issues um, are really the one that I don't know or haven't really heard some ideas from the other candidates for yet. Um, it's something that I've kind of had some specific ideas and things I want to work on if I'm elected. So rather than disagreeing with them, I'll say I haven't really heard their position on it, but that's where my priority is. And it seems like, I, I don't know, I just haven't heard it yet, or that's not a priority for the other folks. But maybe that's the only difference between us. So thank you. Uh, yo quiero decirles que como candidato hay muchas cosas importantes para mí que creo que son importantes y en las que me gustaría trabajar. No puedo hablar por los otros candidatos, creo que todos eh, estamos preparados para esta carrera y para ser su representante, pero también debo de decir de hablar por mí en esta ocasión. Y yo creo que una de las prioridades que yo tomaría como su representante, ya que todo me interesa, pero sería la parte educativa. La educación es para mí muy importante y como candidato yo trabajaría en esa área en específico, más que en las otras áreas. Claro que todo me interesa, pero eso para mí lo más importante es la educación. Muchas gracias. Thank you, and another very good question. And uh, I think just to, to echo 
uh, lose thoughts and sentiments. I mean, it's not about disagreeing. It's not about having issue with another candidate's position. I mean, this is part of the greater debate. I mean, this is what running for office is all about, to have debates like this, to be able to share your point of view and to convince people that that is the right direction. That is the role of a state representative. When we get up there, no matter who it is, and I, I feel confident that it'll be me, is that you will have to debate other members who do not agree with you. You will have to debate members that are looking to allocate funds for their district. That is part of what it takes to be a state representative. It's trying to find common ground. It's trying to find commonality and working as hard as you can for the issues that you believe in. Yo creo que eh, eso no se trata, para que entiendan, eh, la pregunta que se nos hizo no es por qué es un buen candidato o por qué no es un buen candidato. Yo creo que todos estamos preparados para hacerlo y creo que la persona que represente a todos ustedes va a ser una persona que va a hacer un excelente trabajo y que yo estoy dispuesto a que sea quien sea que gane, yo por supuesto que le voy a apoyar. Porque se trata de que trabajemos todos juntos en honor a servir a ustedes, pero también hacer las cosas bien para el servicio de la comunidad. Pero, aunque eso es lo que creo, que todos estamos bien preparados, yo creo firmemente que yo es el que voy a ganar. Muchas gracias. I want to be specific. Uh, I'm calling all the candidates to challenge me more. Because sometimes I feel that I'm it's more that you need to learn from this side, so I'm asking you to challenge me more. People deserve to know more what's happening, especially you candidates, and I will do the same thing. Thank you. Um, yo le pido a todos los candidatos, yo llamo a todos los candidatos que me desafíen más. Le pido a todos los candidatos que me desafíen más. Porque es la mejor manera de entendernos y aprender acerca de nosotros. Y ese desafío nos hace mejor. To me, it's not about disagreements, it's about effectiveness. We all want a red blue connector, we all want a senior center, we all want good schools, good jobs, and a safe and healthy community. I will be an effective advocate for the issues that are important to this community. I've done this job for four years, and I'll have no problem leveraging the relationships I've built with folks in the State House, other members of the Boston delegation and House leadership, and my relationships with the governor's office to make sure that East Boston gets what it deserves. That's what an effective representative does. Para mí no es una, esto para mí no es una carrera de competencia, para mí no es eh, ver los errores de los demás, para mí es la eficiencia que es lo importante, o sea, qué eficaz sería yo para trabajar como su representante, si yo ganaría, haría muchas cosas para que ustedes estuvieran bien, pero trabajaríamos nuevamente todos unidos y haría lo necesario para que los servicios estén disponibles a la comunidad y servirles lo mejor que pueda y trabajar todos juntos. Y las áreas, por ejemplo, eh, todas las áreas y servicios uh, disponibles a la comunidad, pues también me uniría a ellos a trabajar juntos por el bien de nuestra comunidad. Como su representante, haría que estas cosas mejoren y que funcionen mejor para nuestra comunidad. Muchas gracias. I think the question was um, if we disagreed or anything was wrong. Yeah, so if you disagree with any of the other okay. candidates, point out. Okay. I think uh, any, everybody up here is speaking from their heart. I think that they have passion for what they're saying and conviction. So no one's wrong. No one's right and no one's wrong. I think that um, it's more that what they believe in and what we all believe in. And I think it's for a better community, uh, safe community. Uh, for me, as a social worker, I see pain and suffering every day. I see people suffering to try to make ends meet. I see people who have to make a decision between food, shelter, the rent, um, paying uh, co-pays. They don't come to therapy because they can't afford co-pays. I work every day listening to problems, and I'll tell you, it's not getting easier and it's not getting better. And that's the fault of the, our state for budget cuts, and that's wrong. I have no allegiance to anyone in the state house. I'm an independent, and that's where I'll stay because I feel like I know what people are struggling with, and I'm the voice for the people that don't have voices. Thank you.
Como una trabajadora para la, para la comunidad, yo quiero decir que una de las cosas que uh, uh, yo haría es trabajar para que las personas tengan aquellos servicios que necesitan, especialmente las personas que más están sufriendo por problemas, situaciones, eh, de alguna circunstancia, eh, como es, como mencioné, que trabajaba con muchos jóvenes y he visto tantas dificultades con estas personas. Y eso es, es uh, lo que yo haría para mejorar y trabajar para la comunidad si yo fuera su representante. Pero también creo que no es quién está haciendo bien o quién está haciendo mal. Es cómo nosotros podemos trabajar juntos, aunque yo creo que cada uno de los candidatos estamos esta noche hablando desde nuestro corazón y por cada uno de nosotros. Pero a mí sí me gustaría ganar la representación. Muchas gracias. Well, that, that's it for the, for the questions tonight. I know everyone's got scheduled to go, but I first off want to say, uh, let's give a round of applause for all the candidates here tonight. Excellent. We're very lucky here in East Boston. We have six great candidates for the state rep, and uh, I wish them all well, and uh, it'll be great to see uh, what happens here on election day on, for you guys. Uh, but thank you everyone for, for participating tonight. Your participation, your attendance here tonight is important in the democratic process here in East Boston. And I'm glad to see you come up and uh, thank you and have a good night. Appreciate it. And we have one question. I just uh, a round of applause for our translator. I think she did a great job. Absolutely. Okay. Not easy work. Thanks. Believe me. Thank you everyone.